How do you extract value from the profile and reputation you've built in the marketplace? How can you package and leverage your knowledge and expertise for greater influence and impact? Welcome to Reputation Revolution, the show where we dissect what's involved in commercializing and profiting from your professional personal brand. You've put in the hard yards. Now it's time to capitalize. Let's dive in. G'day, welcome back to the Reputation Revolution podcast. My name is Trevor Young. Now, most business owners post online with no idea where their next lead is coming from. So says today's expert guest, Chris James, founder of Content to Clients Consulting, based out of Manchester in the UK. Chris, welcome to the show. I get the feeling this chat's going to be on the energetic side because you uh, don't appear to hold back on uh, on a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I believe in uh, in giving my all. I'm a, I'm a passionate person. Um, I like what I like, but I want to say thank you for having me on. And yeah, let's get the uh, the energy levels through the roof, man. <laughs> all righty. Uh, well, let's rip into it. Um, what were you doing ten years ago? Oof, you're gonna be um, you're gonna be sad you asked that question. It'll make me sad as well. So <laughs> ten years ago, I was sat at this exact time. If it was a work day, I'd be just walking into my telemarketing job in about a 200-person call center where I would have to put a headset on, do 220 dials a day with timed toilet breaks. Um, oh. You weren't allowed an open mug on your desk, <laughs> even though the, manage- the management were, but apparently us, uh, us low levels weren't. Um, and you had to have a gap time of like 30 seconds or less between each call. And at, at this point, I was either moved on to sales or I was still appointment set in for a um vehicle tracking solutions company so i was ringing businesses boom 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 trying to get appointments for the reps or i was selling a few other products that i eventually sort of graduated to when i proved myself a bit so probably not great at the time by the sound of things but uh some reasonable grounding uh when you look back in hindsight I'm extremely grateful for it. It was horrible. Yeah, I think <laughs> 10 years ago, I think I'd just moved into my own house. It, there was a load of damp in there. It was cold. It was wet. I remember it specifically being December, actually, when I moved in. And it was just not a nice place. It was just a, a cold existence. I was drinking at the weekends. That was my escape. I would be drinking heavily, eating a load of crap. I'd probably have an extra stone and a half on me compared to where, where I am now. So I wasn't in, a, wasn't in a great place, to be honest, Trevor. Well, I'm sorry to have brought all that up for you, but uh, <laughs> um, it just shows you there's the pendulum swung back the other way. Um, why don't you skip through the, the years and, and how did you get to what you're doing now? Uh, but also then tell us what you are doing now. So, I mean, what led you? It was a bit of a zigzag path. Yeah, so I'd, I'd sold. I've been in sales for a while, probably about sixteen, seventeen years. Um, so six or seven years at that point. Um, I met my best friend and my wife to be at the call center. So and I, I built a backbone and resilience. I'm not af- afraid of the word no, for example. Now I know that you have to put the numbers in. I know sales is an art and a science, but also a hard work and a numbers game, as I say. So. I, uh, I then moved to selling at a different different place, selling digital advertising solutions. A lot, lot more responsibility, treated like an adult, um, thought that was the real world. Worked there for a while, smashed all the targets, was consistently top of the board there, and that's when the confidence really started to grow. And after that, I'd been begging my friend who I met at the telemarketing agency to get me a job at his place, which was a marketing agency, um, which was my sort of first exposure to content so it took a couple of years i think i started in there 2016 um, and i ended up being one of two i think there were only two himself and me sales people yep. who didn't either leave or get fired because it was a really hard role yep. we'd bring people in and they'd have all the experience and be really good but just didn't have the work ethic or we'd bring people who had the work ethic in but just didn't have like they couldn't talk about marketing in, in a sophisticated enough way me and him were both like in between both of those things we had the work ethic and we weren't necessarily the most intelligent but we were intelligent enough to be able to articulate ourselves and like think creatively so i stepped up to head of sales there um head of partnerships we called it and then after that i started posting some content on instagram 
hiding behind my design, so no face. Um, and I was just putting out B2B sales content. A couple of people came to me and said, do you think you could help me out? So I was like, yeah, I'll charge charge you a, a small hourly fee. And then I looked at my wife like, I could make some, I could make a couple hundred pounds a month here. This could be amazing. <laughs> Um, and it's funny how, how quickly that things shift after that. I spoke to a couple of other people. I was like, right, I need to, because I'm very systems and process orientated. I need to systemize this, turn it into something that's a bit more scalable. Yep. Um, and so I did. I launched I launched Content to Clients, which is our signature six-month program, helping other coaches, mentors, consultants, creatives, small business owners win more clients using organic content online. Yep. I launched that in December, uh, sorry, January 2022. Um July 2022, I left that marketing job and went full time on this. Right, and that so was, you're juggling the two. You're juggling the two for a bit. Juggling the two for yeah, probably a year nearly, but not all in on either. Yep. And uh, we had a, a family tragedy where my brother-in-law was killed. Um, so that night, obviously, I spent a lot of time with my sister, um, the kids, and stuff. And that night, I got very drunk. I made a sort of pact with myself, like if if things can happen that quickly, if life can vanish that quickly, then I need to do exactly what I want to do and not anything else. And I loved working at the marketing agency. They treated me like a king Um, and I'll always be grateful. I'll always help them out, recommend them wherever I can, but this is my path. And I decided I need to do what lights me up. So I quit the job in July without even being in profit with this. I had a little bit of savings. Um, then my dad passed away in, that, in August, and that was a real motivator for me to go, right, we're going all in now, and, and I have. And I, I had no idea it would happen this quickly or this successfully. Because there's a few of you now in the, in the business? Yeah. I mean, they're not fully employed, but they work. They've got their own businesses, but a couple of them are ex-clients. So we've got Vicky, head of client success. Um, we have Katie who helps with sales and, and also some delivery Nasha who heads up the marketing side of things. Um, and then I've got various outsourcing partners for YouTube and things like that. And I've just yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, um, hired a, a VA because Nasha was sort of a VA, but she's been moved up. So yeah, there's, there's like five of us and, and my, I include my bookkeeper in that team as well, because it's a really close knit community yeah. even though we've only met once or twice isn't it terrific though just as an aside before we get into the um you know the, the content to clients um um theory that you you talk about but isn't it just terrific now that we can build businesses and bring in people and they can work virtually and um you know they can be remote to us they can be contract they can be part-time all of that sort of stuff the flexibility we have um, to be able to create a and scale up without necessarily smashing ourselves by employing people, uh, which is just put, yeah, an impost on on small business owners. It's I didn't know this world existed, mate. Like it was completely unexpected, and I think that's what happens when you take a bit of a risk and you put yourself out there and yeah. go out of the comfort zone. You start to find out things didn't that things actually are possible that you didn't think were possible. Yeah. I'm in the telemarketing agency. I didn't know that. I didn't in other. I thought that was normal. Yeah. I thought you had to feel shit about your job. I thought you had to um, <laughs> drink at the weekend to like forget about the week that you had to have. That was normal. Nine to five, small town mentality. Yeah. All my friends going through the same thing. I moved to the recruit uh, the digital advertising space. A bit more freedom. Like, oh my god, this isn't a real job. I feel like um, I can't remember his name. I'm sure Shank Redemption when he leaves and he has to ask to go to the toilet. Morgan Freeman yeah. has to ask to go to the toilet at the supermarket. And they just said, you don't need to ask that. It was kind of like freeing. And then I go to the marketing agency and all of a sudden I'm heading up and sort of pit that. Um, I can't think of the word spearheading the, uh, the approach and, and the industries we're going after and measuring the metrics, setting up the CRM, like in, in charge of a couple of people. And then I'm like, this isn't a real job. I can control my own schedule. All they want is just money on the board. They don't monitor me at all. I can work from home, do what I want. And now this is like, I can actually do what I want. Yeah. Me and my wife are going out for breakfast in, um, well, whenever she gets back from dropping my daughter off at school. Don't normally do it, but sometimes we hop out. So it's absolutely astounding. And these people in the team, 
They're like my best friends. Yeah. And 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 that's that's you know you you started to develop a culture for your business and and at the end of the day, as mm. you said, you're you're um, you're dealing with often a lot of solopreneurs and you know creative people and owners of what I'd call an expertise based business, and a lot of them are in the same boat. You know, they're either running their own show by themselves or they they're putting together sort of small teams and and so when you're in that boat with them. Um, it, you can have that that empathy. So let's zero in because you know what you've you've realised and what what I said at the outset is that you know people are in those types of businesses, people who are running expertise based businesses, for example, uh, service based businesses. You know they uh, create content, getting out there, and we talk about that this often on the show. Uh, but we want to zero yeah. in on. Um, you know, when you talk about organic, con- I mean, you talk about organic content, but you're talking about, um, we're talking about social media, uh, you talk about long form content, blogs, podcasts, where do we want to focus today? Because, you know, we've got YouTube, I know you use LinkedIn a lot. Uh, where, where, where do you, with these clients that you're dealing with, what is social media to them and where are they posting content? And we can zero in from that. Uh, predominantly LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. that I think is is the platform with the highest intent to do business yep. um, for obvious reasons. I mean, some people I've spoken to on sales calls will be like, oh, I should go on TikTok or I feel like I need to do an Instagram. And I love Instagram. You know, I started the whole business on Instagram. But is that where your audience are? Is that the best sort of entry point to them? Probably not if you're doing what our clients do, which is typically, as you say, expertise-based businesses. I, I love that phrase. I've not heard that before. Um, I like that. So LinkedIn is the main one, but yeah. I, I like to have a holistic approach. You know, we, we, I've worked with some big brands. I've seen the touch points throughout a customer journey in my role at the content marketing agency. And I know one channel probably isn't enough. The people that tell you it is, who, like people like me who might mentor or have something to sell, will tell you that it's enough But because they've got a solution to sell around that one platform. But actually, they're doing ads or they're sending emails every day or they've got a t- you know, whatever it is. Um, so I like to think about it as everyone should have one short-form platform and one long-form platform. Yeah. Now, if, you, if you're better on camera and you're better at talking, that should probably for our clients be LinkedIn and YouTube. Yep. Yep. If you're better at writing LinkedIn and email. Yep. I think. Yeah. No, I agree. Have a sort of a, I'd probably sort of take that further than the long form. I, I always like someone to be able to maybe create a show if, if they've, if they want to go down that path. So, you know, it's a podcast or a YouTube show or a email newsletter is kind of like your own destination, isn't it? So, um, mm. and then you have one short form. I've always liked one, one short form to, um, social channel to really focus on and maybe experiment with another one because I think experimentation can be quite good. But as you say, it depends on where your audience is. And, you know, for some people that is Instagram. Um, I know some people who are in the B2B space who Instagram's really big for them. But the same, what you're going to talk about, the same rules apply anyway, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I think the problem with the short form is it's it's great for awareness. It's not necessarily as stuff at the top of the funnel and maybe a little bit of a little bit of nurturing. But I think the long form stuff, you know, like the podcast, like YouTube videos, um, and I include podcasting in long form channels just just for reference. But yeah. um, you've got the opportunity there to build a lot more trust with your audience because you're spending or they're spending a lot more time with you. Yeah. which I think is really crucial because you scroll through LinkedIn. One, it's diluted with ads. It's it's not as bad as Instagram and Facebook, but you know it's slowly getting there. I think it's one in every three, one in every four posts. Um, and also, there's so much content on there. And a lot of people, especially in my space, it's like an echo chamber. They're all just saying the same things and it's bouncing back. So it's, it's important to stand out, of course, but standing out with short form content is very, very hard, I think. Um, on a consistent basis. So if you can signpost people who are potentially interested or a little bit further down the funnel to YouTube, where you can get them to spend time with you for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes, you're they're going to trust you a lot more. And then when they see you on the short form platform again, they're more likely to take action on the thing that you want them to, which will be the, the conversion part into a lead, into a download, into a um, newsletter sign up into booking a call into a small click to buy journey whatever it is that bit 
can be sped up by introducing long form, I believe. Yeah. And that's that's your speciality, and that's what we're going to um, unpack here to, uh, tonight for me, uh, this, this morning for you. Very early. <laughs> yeah, very early for me. Um, so... <laughs> You know, in terms of, as you said, you you know, a lot of, a lot of people are, everyone's on social, everyone's on LinkedIn, everyone's doing everything. And by the time the clients get to you, what's their, what are their sort of pain points? Are they, are they doing well on these channels um, and building an audience or they're just frustrated and they're going round and round or they don't know where to start? What's the, what's the commonality? Because I'm sure a lot of the listeners, whatever the commonality is, a lot of the, the listeners will have that same issue. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, because a lot of these expertise based, a lot of experts, let's just say, are exactly that. They're experts at what they do. So if they're a coach or they're a designer or they're an accountant or a bookkeeper, for example, they'll be great at doing that. But they don't they don't know how to market yeah. themselves. And the biggest piece of the whole puzzle isn't the sales. It isn't the delivery. Yes, they're both extremely important. It's actually the marketing piece. So most people come to us with the wrong impression about what they need, and that's fine. Um, they will come to us because they want more, either leads or clients. Yep. But actually, if I start probing and asking questions, or one of the sales teams start probing and asking questions about their current activity, we'll find out you can't have a sales problem because you've not got enough leads so therefore, it's you, the sales part doesn't exist. It's a marketing issue, therefore. So let's look at your marketing. You know, how frequently are you posting, emailing, running ads, whatever it is? We don't typically mess around with ads, um, but we'll we'll end up finding out that they're not the activity isn't prob it probably isn't enough. But then also we'll go okay. So can you articulate you know your offer, your audience, your outcome, the promise that you you and your business have? And usually they struggle to do that. Yeah. Or they've got 10 different packages. And it's all about the offer and the messaging first. So they've they've come in right at the end. I've only had, ever had one client come in, and this is a one-to-one -one client, so they're not in content to clients. Um, but they wanted me to help them restructure the whole delivery system and the product, which we're doing. And it's working amazing. It's saving them loads of time. However... Everyone apart from that, it's it's all about the sales and the stuff that comes before fulfillment. But actually, it's right at the start. It's the offer. It's the messaging. It's identifying who they sell to, what their pain points and problems are, and also articulating that efficiently and wrapping it in a message that they can talk about consistently in a million different ways. Yeah. And so once they get their head around that, is that they, it's a productization thing or the service or what it is that they, they offer? Um, we sort of... You know, there's different ways of talking about this. We've we we sort of cover it a little bit on the show, but um, in terms of uh, are they creating? Have they got digital products, or are they more service based offers? Service based, typically, when they come in, some of them have a vision to creating a, a course or a digital product, which is great. Um, however, I usually disagree with them, and I usually say, unless you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers you're probably not going to have the traffic to be able to direct towards a, a paid digital product. Yep. Yep. And I, I've, I've got quite, you know, probably 70, 80,000 in, in total across a couple of platforms. And I still haven't really pushed a, a digital course of any kind. Yep. That's not to say I don't, I don't have a course, but what I'm trying to do is engineer the perfect course. So build, and it's an evolving course that you get as part of working with us that is consistently up to date, consistently things are moving around, simplified, new new tactics. There's principles and strategies in there, but there's tactics um, that change day to day. So we just update that. Um, and building that, yes, it's taken two years, which is longer than I envisioned. It might take three or four, um, but building that will allow me to build the, in, with real-time feedback from clients who are using it currently will allow me to then release the perfect polished product that has been battle tested against all the client problems and questions and objections that I could maybe then start to use as a click to buy. Okay, so you've kind of got a hybrid offer. This we're jumping off off for a tick here, but uh, I want to go down this rabbit hole. Uh, you've got a hybrid offer, so you're you're 
advising and coaching and consulting to them, but you've got a, a parallel, uh, I guess, offering that goes with that, that meaning that they a lot of the, uh, I guess, the resources and the, the collateral there, they can jump into online and, and they've got that as well. So uh, whatever you're working with them, they can go back and do some other stuff and some learning, extra learning uh, with the, re- the exclusive resources that they get from working with you. Is that have I got that bit right? Pretty much, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pretty much have. So when, when I speak to these people, apart from, you know, the like operational um, problems that they have, I've narrowed it down to three problems that I see every single time on sales calls. It could be one or it could be all three of them. And I've called it SAD just because I can't think of any other acronym <laughs> at the moment. But they either want speed and they want to do it fast. They either want accountability or support. And then they want direction or a roadmap. That's what people need. And a lot of the time, whether they care to admit it on a call with us or not, they need all three. Yeah. Because those things really, really help you reach a goal quicker. Okay. So they have a goal. We can give them those things. And the way that we give them those things through the deliverables um, is through structure and complete fluidity at the same time. So, yes, we have regular calls as a group bunch of entrepreneurs they've all inv- invested multi four figures they've all got very similar questions they can either help people or be helped by other people so it's like a, a hive mind which is really really powerful and they give 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 and very rarely take which, which again because we vet everyone through sales calls is great so we've got a community platform as well where you can message any any time and get answers from people all over the globe in a, in a similar situation too we have some one-on-one attention from the team. We have experts coming in. And these are all the fluid parts that are constantly moving. Yeah. But the online portal or the course is what gives them the direction part. So right. there are specific – you come in and you are given um, an well, eight to 12-week, I would say, roadmap about how to structure your time, how to set your financial objectives and the KPIs that derive from that. You then on board with one of our – uh, with our head of client success who will do a kickoff call with you. And, you know, you've been in for about a week now. We want to find out what your experience is like, um, set expectations from our side and find out expectations from your side. Then we're on to what, because it's all through personal brand, what are your differentiation points? Because there are loads of people that sell design. There are loads of accountants out there. So the differentiation point and your USP is actually you, which yep. is great. So we can then actually start to shape out the offer and a content and a marketing strategy where we're providing specific, I've got bespoke uh, bespoke systems that I've built, that I've used, that I pass on to my clients that allow them with video tutorials to fill out exactly what they need to know. So they have everything in one place and they can come back to whether it's a CTA, whether it's headlines, whether it's their content pillars, all in one place in terms of a marketing strategy alongside shared loads of templates. And that's where it's structured, but also fluid. Yeah, so it feels um, to me like it's DIY and done with you as well, but you don't run an agency done for you. So uh, is, is or do yet. you do that as well? No, not yet. I come from the agency background. It's, it's quite stressful. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I think putting the onus, I, I don't want to do any of our clients the disservice of spoon feeding them or holding their hands because if I did that for people, they wouldn't grow. Yeah. So yes, we're here to support um, yes, we're here to hold them accountable. Yes, we're here to give them direction. But aside from that, the, you know, the outputs of, of what we what we help people do, I don't know if you've seen any of the client results, but we get some amazing results. Yeah. Like um, our, client, our clients, the ones who truly lean in, get amazing results financially. But what we're actually seeing is growth, mental yeah. growth. That is the output of doing it themselves rather than doing it for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's a totally different model too. Of course, the uh, you know do it for them is an, is the agency model, and that's when you're employing people often or bringing in experts, and and uh, it's a different it, it's it's the traditional way, and it's not that it's wrong, but I think it's, as you say, you've used the word fluid, and I think uh, people require a bit more flexibility in how they 
they get stuff done today. So I just wanted to unpack that because it's it's you know the the different types of models people can have now. Um, you know, you you've got your personal brand. Um, just looking at you, you've built that you know personal brand. Uh, you built that following. Uh, you've turned it into a business, but it's now how you're rolling that business out. How you're um, you know putting on people who are part of your team, but not part, you know, but you know you're not. Um, they've got their other businesses as well. So it's you're running a very modern company. And I think anyone who's, you know, probably look at stuff in a traditional sense might look at what you're doing and say, hey, well, there might be something in this, you know, for me to, to be able to do it. Um, let's just jump into LinkedIn because, that, as you said, that's the main um, social channel that you, you look at. You're very active on it. Um, mm. Looking at your stuff too, and I'll, I'll open up with this because, again, we're looking at organic content that drives client leads because people are coming to you for client leads, um, qualified client leads, and and using organic content and and it's the holy grail for uh, most people because they don't want to pay you know you don't really want to pay for ads if you don't really have to. So with that in mind, um, one thing I've noticed about your content is you mix it up a lot. I'm I'm a I'm a believer in doing this as well. Uh, but you're doing it to the nth degree. So you've got, you know, carousels, videos, polls. Um, you've got some funny stuff. You've got some background stories. You've got some... Um, I actually um, like the uh, the fact I talk about utility content, leadership content, human content, and brand content, and you've got all of those. So unpacking that, utility content is the how-to, and you put some really good how-to stuff and you break you know, with the tips and the educational stuff. And then you have some leadership content, which is you know, really pushing out there and changing the way people think about a topic or an issue. And um, sometimes people don't even know what they don't know. So that, you know, it's to be more thought-provoking, which you do a bit of that. Uh, you do the human stories, which I've seen that. And you've done some uh, really good, um, um, you know, some really good brand stuff as well, but not overcooking it. You've still got the, you know, some strong calls to action and some straight brand stuff as well. So you actually sit in my the model that I, I teach as well. Unbeknownst to you, you've been doing that anyway. So um, I'll, I'll, mm. I'll take my hat off to you on that on that front. But what's your Thank your you. theory around just mixing it up? Is there a is there a science to this? Has it been experimentation? It's all experimentation. Everything. Marketing's an, a big experiment, isn't it? Because you can't sit on your laurels and rest on one thing for too long, in my opinion. No. You know, we've all heard the phrase adapt or die. Chat GPT coming in, you know, all, it's going to be a completely different world, completely different social and online landscape in the next five years, if not, if not less. Um, but mixing it up, one, because... Doing the same thing all the time doesn't light me up. Yep. I actually, I actually hate it. That's why I've become my own boss in a way is because I want to do different things, meet different people um, and form form a connection in, in different ways with different things. Um, I'm just a, I initially was a, a fan of design. I wasn't a designer. I just knew what looked half decent. I'm a good designer for my brand. For someone else's, I'd probably be terrible. Um, so that leads to the carousel kind of thing. Yep. I started making some funny reels. I got my daughter involved in a few and they did really well on Instagram. And that made me think, all right, okay, maybe I can give the on-camera stuff a try. <laughs> um, and now I, I absolutely thrive on it. I think video is the key, absolute key. Um, video and, and sound um, is the absolute key to building your personal brand and, and humanizing it and, and deepening connection as fast as possible versus text and graphics. But I, I, I did look at it all wrong. I, I did the design and thought the appearance of things was the most important aspect. And I'm still a big fan of having polished, like easy to digest, like slick content visually. However, I didn't really, f it, I've, English has always been my best subject. Always was. I don't really practice it now as a subject, but um, I didn't put enough onus on the words. And maybe I was inadvertently doing it or subconsciously doing it. You know, it was obviously working quite well. But coming over to LinkedIn made me realize that the words are the most powerful thing. Yep. And that was a big shift. Even though to a seasoned marketer, 
that's just co- or anyone it's like it's common sense it's communication that's what marketing and sales and delivery is is just clear communication and connection so once i realized that i was like right what are the different ways that i can filter my words which is ultimately the same message in as many different ways as possible and for me that means using all the formats yeah. now i have got a preference on which formats i like to make i've got a preference in terms of what performs better but the whole key i think with linkedin or any social platform is once you know the message once you know the like where you want people to go it's stepping back and going right what are the objectives here before i start publishing content for the sake of it or because i've seen some other person doing a stupid dancing reel (laughs) what like you don't go too far to the tactics straight away. The tactics come at the end, you know, principles first, then strategy. So what's the plan and how are you going to execute the plan? That's like the, the, the tactics of the later stages. So it's really important first to, I, I'm a big fan of zooming out. I'll be like, right, what are the goals for this year? What are the goals when I, when I know them really big ones and only a few of them. Okay. What are the goals for each quarter? Okay then go into a month and then we go into a week and then day to day. And it's like they looking at the macro before you go anywhere near the micro is absolutely essential. And it starts with the objective. Yes. I published a video today. That video is made. Well, it's with two intent, really two intents is to build trust and like help people out and deliver value, of course. But underneath that, I'm trying to get people to download something to get them into my ecosystem, to actually take them off LinkedIn and get them into our email. It's not a funnel. It's just onto the email newsletter so we can keep giving and giving and giving value. And then when they're ready, if they're right, they'll take another action. So it's, it starts with intention and that's what a lot of people miss. They're just spray and pray, hit and hope post content and a lot, you know, no objective, they don't know where they're going because it's not been grounded. It's not been it's not been thought through. It doesn't come from a message. And they're either like selling all the time because they think that's the best way to get sales because they've not been taught any differently, or they don't mention that they can help anyone at all, which obviously means they're probably not going to get <laughs> any sales. So again, setting the intentions and balance is a big part of that. Hmm. You need to be in the middle. You need to talk about what you do. You don't want to be pushy. And yeah. that's, I think, these all these elements – that play into a personal brand. You know, you've got the person at the forefront, you've got the opportunity that they can bring to other people through following, buying, engaging with them. And then you've got like the mission, the thing that they stand for, the the, the change that they want to see in the world. And if you can get all those three nailed yep. alongside balance and do it in a balanced way through different formats, slightly different topics, et cetera, et cetera, that's when you'll really start to make a splash. So is your theory then really around, you know, as you said, a lot of people are pitch, 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 or it's all about them and all of that sort of stuff. And others just do nice fluffy stuff and whatever, but there's no intention was the word that one of the words that you use, no intention there. And you saying that uh, with your stuff, it's, it's both like not necessarily together. Um, I mean, if take calls to action, um, if you post, and I think you said you post daily, that's your, your rhythm on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. How much of those five, six, seven, however many a week uh, posts, how many have a a call to action uh, and really design? I'm not su- suggesting, I know you've, you've usually got a few words down the bottom um, in the text, uh, which a lot of people do, but really within the body of, you know, the video or the carousel stroke document. I think every... every- Every piece of content has a small CTA, whether it's Hmm. obvious or not. Um, If we go with hard conversion content, I go through... That's cyclical for us. So I'm I'm not... We'll always have a balance, but sometimes we'll have a sprint or push harder than others. Right, so it's not, not, say, twice a week we go with a hard uh, call to action. It's you'll do... You know, at the start of a three months, you might go for a bang, 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 hard conversion, and then just peter out a little bit. 
I'm a big fan of sort of campaign cycles. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, if for, for the average person starting out, I think you've really got two objectives, right? You either want to grow the right audience or you want to monetize or you can try and do both. And there are different types of content that will help you do those things. And again, once you've got the intention, you can go down into the objective for each piece of content and then the journey, which is sort of the, the how we do it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's best to have balance overall, yep. which I think just a couple of posts referencing your offer, one of them with a really hard CTA, then some stuff that's a bit wider that can appeal to people like... I look at my topics. Yes, I help people win clients, but not everyone knows they need to win clients or likes our methodology at first. So the wider stuff will be around like productivity and like time and some systems based stuff and just money in general. And those are like universal topics that anyone can buy into. Yep. Yep. And a lot of, a lot of people will disagree with this, but I think, you know, if I can help people just by publishing wider content like that, it, one, it, it it's going to help more people, but it's also going to help my mass appeal from a selfish point of view too. Yep. And then like the next step down, if you like, is going to be the people that are interested or maybe do fit the target market. And then we tailor certain maybe two pieces of content a week to, okay, so it's not just productivity. It's how a business owner who has a very small team or just a VA, i.e. our target market, um, uses productivity or time efficiently um yeah. and it's yeah it's it is just a complete balance so i'd say 80 20 uh, sorry 20 80 in favor of com- like hard conversion content for sure so 20 percent hard conversion or 80 yeah 20 yeah, percent yeah so that's the, the nice 80 20 rule and um explain for us what would be an example of a hard cta versus a soft cta in the content that you create great question um soft cta i would say something is just like a product placement within a post so what i'm seeing work really well at the moment is just a picture of me on linkedin pitch a single picture or sorry photo i should call it um with some form of lesson or story attached to it and a lot of the time in those stories i will be weaving in something about my business or how my business has impacted people like you, for example, um, and telling stories that would be like the softer approach. The harder approach will be me going, I've got space next week for calls. Check out Dave. We helped make him a millionaire in 13 seconds. Um, book a call immediately. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and so subtle versus not subtle or indirect versus direct. Yeah, got you. And so that hard one is probably more twenty percent of your overarching overall content, uh, roughly, and then you know the rest. And and the other thing is when I was talking about the mix, I I, I just want to reiterate this because I really love your your LinkedIn feed, and 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 it is mixed up really nicely. Um, and clearly, there's thought put into that um and you know as you said you don't want to be doing the same thing all the time it does get boring and we need to keep ourselves fresh as well as keep the feed fresh for other people but you know it's as they say the old maxim uh sometimes the truisms in content marketing aren't too bad but you know is it educational is it inspirational is it entertaining and you've got to tick a few of those boxes every time um and your Mm. stuff is you know you are either educating you are inspiring with the story um your own plus your clients stories and then you do some straight off the wall off the charts um what do you call them? Corporate Charlies. I, I don't know if I want to get into explaining what a, a corporate Charlie is, but uh, you uh, just do some little, let's call them skits, uh, just yeah. to break things up again. What's the, um, how did the skits come about? How often do you post? I've only seen a, a handful of them, but they literally are skits. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Leah Turner, who's a big name on LinkedIn, calls them Corporate Collins. Um, which is just basically people who were on LinkedIn 10 years ago, I think who are quite, quite boring and quite formal and think things have to be done by the book. And they, you know, they don't like tattoos and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a joke. Um, I mean, my dad's called Colin, so I can't take it too, too seriously. (laughs) He definitely wasn't, he wasn't corporate though, to be fair. Um, so the skits, I started out on Instagram and I thought, you know, there's there's a better way of telling a story than just jumping on and me 
showing my face and doing a talking head video? How can I get this, uh, the, like, this point across that's actually helpful but also entertaining? So I, start, I created my own character based on an old sales manager that I had called Can't Close Carl because he was, he was the sales manager, but his results were terrible. Um, nice guy. But, yeah, he, he was one of the people I was talking about who had all the skills but didn't have the work ethic. So I made a character out of him, and it was my wife that named him Can't Close Carl. I was like, that's brilliant. So I started making videos with two personalities. So I would have one with me with a blazer on and glasses, and the other one would just be me chilled out in the stuff that I normally wear. I would play the expert, and the glasses would be Can't Close Carl with the, with the blazer on, and, and he, he would be, be a bit dumb. So I, I, would, I thought, I can get points across whilst being funny here. So I did, you know, I was like, sell me this pen. And then Carl goes, but you already have a pen. I was like, I know that. It's just practice. Just pretend to sell me the pen. And then Carl would be like, well, wh- why don't you just write on your computer? And then I'd, be, I'd just throw the pen over my shoulder and then it would loop around. So I'd started creating these scenarios that I'd seen in corporate environments and, and making fun out of them. And then I thought, my daughter's quite funny. Um, I could get her involved. So I, I, And I hate the dancing trends on, on Instagram and stuff. So I was like, how can I say that I'm against that without really saying that? <laughs> so I pretended to do one where I was pointing and then she ran, ran up and boom, like it punched me and I fell on the floor. And um, yeah, and she's like started jumping on top of me and, and hitting me from me filming underneath. And that's, they started to get some good traction. And I thought, right, there's loads of stuff I can do here. Hmm. So I, I got the kids involved and that really helped on Instagram. I've not done it so much on LinkedIn, not because yeah. I've been wary, but because I've just, I want to have, I'm trying to up my perception as because I, sometimes I need to dumb my personality down. Yep. I think. But as, as I'm saying this, I'm just thinking like I've got so many funny videos that I could post <laughs> on LinkedIn. Maybe I should just dedicate a bit of a month to it. Um, it that's, that's the problem, I think, with, with running, running a business and monetizing an audience is you get into it for fun, but you see there's an opportunity to make money and all of a sudden things get a bit serious. Yeah. So, oh, if I keep doing this one thing, I keep making more money. And whilst, yeah, I am having fun, it's still, it, it's not as fun as it was. Yeah. It's probably better. I, I, I'm fulfilled, but not as much fun. So yeah. I think just this con- just this conversation, Trevor, has, uh, has inspired me to either go and make some more stuff or <laughs> just pull out some of the golden oldies. <laughs> Watch this space. And I think the, the, the key here is uh, what I want, people to take it listeners to take away from is that you know whatever your channel of choice is and it's likely to be linkedin but it could be instagram it could be uh whatever and and let's put the longer form content to one side because you know that could be the subject for multiple episodes and a lot goes into that but really um you know the organic content that just attracts people to your brand to your orbit leads them to the the, the longer form content and that so people will check you out a bit more, build that trust that um, and you know, familiarity and affinity uh, with your personal brand. Very, very important. But it's a matter of getting them onto into your orbit even deeper. Uh, as you say, um, do you want to get them onto your, what's your goal? Do you want to get them onto your email subscriber list so you can continue the conversation with them um, and then do some offers that way? Uh, getting as you, what you do, you get people on a call so you can screen them when they're ready to do that. And so it's yeah. a bit of a chain that people have, you know, people aren't going to go straight from, well, very unlikely to go straight from a social media post to signing up <laughs> um they you know it's it's looking at all the moving parts and that's that's kind of the sort of stuff that you take people through yeah i mean i love the word ecosystem mm. i don't know if it's because i've only just started using it like yeah. this year um but i love it because there's not one journey for every single person mm. and i think that's that's one of the most important things everything is a journey yeah that's everything is a journey so this conversation that we've been having it's a journey you know we've gone in different directions there will be an end um if i keep talking that end might be 
in 24 <laughs> hours, but there, there will be an end. But there have been multiple touch points, multiple subjects, multiple topics covered, multiple reactions, different emotions. And that's what the buyer's journey is, is kind of like. Yeah. It will it will be a roller coaster. It will zigzag. They'll go backwards, 100%. Um, forwards, diagonally, horizontally. Um, they'll flip upside down. And you, you think about, you know, especially if you're selling a four-figure, multiple four-figure service, the last time you bought something that was multiple four figures, if you're the average person, you probably did some research. You see your friend wearing a wearing your t-shirt. Like you're like, oh, I like that. Okay, I'll go and check them out on Instagram. Like, oh yeah, they look cool. Right, let me check out Google Shopping because I'm yeah. going to see. And then you get hit with an ad. Cool, you click on that. Then you're being retargeted a couple of days later, followed around by some trainers from the same brand. And you're like, oh, there they are again. Then if you had a personal brand attached to it maybe it's an influencer shows up and they've got the t-shirt on bloody hell they're cool they are I've always liked Shaq or I don't know whatever I can't think of Michael Jordan can't think of anyone Conor McGregor will do that um I've always like I've always liked Conor McGregor um oh they've got a special offer on 10% there's a reason to buy now okay I'm doing it so it's those and it's the same with the personal brand, you know. Oh. Don't think uh, when these people are sending cold DMs, that's even worse than thinking you're going to get one piece of content. A cold DM, cold DM's fine. A cold pitch is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I don't know why people still do it, but I if you know. think you look at the journey between everything I've just mentioned, so you've seen someone on on a LinkedIn live, they've connected with you, you see they've got a freebie, you download it, you get a few different emails, you see that the person, uh, one of the people they've helped is very similar to you and they've just helped them achieve your desired result. They end up popping up in your DMs then and then saying, hey, how's it going? Notice we were connected, you know, saw you located in Switzerland or whatever. I've got an auntie from there. She's called Edna. She likes, I don't know, playing tiddlywinks or, you know, what any similarities you can pull from what that person has they're going to be much more likely to buy from you than if they'd only seen one piece of content or been hit with a cold pitch so that's the ecosystem yeah, all man. these different parts um and i think a really a, one thing i learned when i was at the agency was a phrase that someone said um which was no loose ends yep everything points somewhere and that's how you can get an ecosystem to work yeah, I like that. I like that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big rap. I use the word ecosystem as well because that's what it is, and it's all those mm, touch points. And and you know, you can you can't be on everything, but you can be on a lot of things if you're smart about it. But you've got to have consistent messaging across them as well. So that's a subject to offer <laughs> again for another episode. Uh, before I let you go. Um, uh, Chris, I'd like to just get just to bring this to life a little bit. Not not that it hasn't been to life, but just with some of your client stories, because you have got some uh, good client stories. But if you've got a sort of a, a favourite one or two, or one that you know of someone that's you know was has gone through the journey that you've just been talking about, but has just embraced and just gone off the charts, and and probably didn't have many leads, and now uh, because they've they've gone through the process that they've got a whole stack of leads and what was it that sort of worked for them? I guess probably everything. <laughs> um, Question without I've notice. Got two, <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got two examples. So the first one, and this is kind of from a selfish point of view, but almost like I'm going to, I'm going to talk about Vicky who is now our head of client success. So I met Vicky in another group we were in. It was something very low level. It ended up being awful, but we won't go into that. Um, I met her there and suggested just to let's have a chat. And I hadn't helped anyone at this stage who did what she did, which was copywriting. I had a chat with this young lady, a couple of years younger than me, um, quite shy, quite timid, nervous laugh. And I could see that she, she needed, needed help with some bits of marketing. Um, and it, you know, it wasn't. I wasn't. It wasn't on my agenda to sell to her. She was like, "Oh, she was a, a copywriter, email copywriter at that point, or emails was something that she did." And she said, "Oh yeah, I need to really get on building a lead magnet." And I was like, "I'll tell you what. You send me that, and this is the first time I met her. You send me that lead magnet in the next twenty four hours, written, and I'll put you in touch with a designer that I know who's cheap and good." and he'll design it for you within a week. 
and she was like, 24 hours, I was like, 24 hours. If it's a minute past midday tomorrow, I'm not going to intrigue you to him. <laughs> and she did. And then, and this is going to illustrate the touch points as well. And then she was obviously really grateful because she was like, I've been wanting to do this for six months. I was like, that's funny, isn't it? Because six months versus 24 hours. And I bet you slept during those 24 hours. It's probably only 16, but then you've got a kid. So, and then it, you probably did it in like four hours. And she's like, yeah, it probably was. I'm like, versus three months. And that's how quick you can you can act if you've got urgency um, injected into the scenario. So anyway, I run a masterclass um, live. She attended. She booked a call straight after and very nervously paid me multiple four figures to join content to clients. And this was a year and a half ago. So it was quite in the early stages. She was, con- she was considering going back to full-time employment and she she was making about nine hundred pounds a month. Within three months, she was at nine grand a month. Six of those grands being monthly recurring revenue because we looked at her packages, and I put her under some. I'm not even going to call it gentle. I put her under some more pressure to show up on camera, and I made her film a, a video short when we were on a Zoom call, one on one. Because some people just need that. It's like they need someone else's permission. So I gave her permission to be herself. And she she owned it. Now you look at her. Hmm. She's head of client success, which is why this is a selfish reason. Because, you know, I, I invest a, a lot of time. I have invested a lot of time into Vicky. Just like she's invested into me. Um, but the change is just astronomical like she's changed her whole life mm. and I, i'm not trying to take credit for all this it's it's just someone giving you permission or someone showing you that something's possible or someone putting you under some unwelcome pressure and forcing your hand in the nicest possible way into what you actually do want to do but you just need to be forced to do it or you need the yeah. gates to open um so that's one story and I love Vicky. She's one of my best friends. Like she is a completely different person. The other story is a one-to-one client of mine called Deirdre who started, she's from Ireland. I don't know if you've read Donald Miller story brand. Oh, I'm aware of it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you can sign up to become a, a story brand certified coach. She's one of two story brand coaches in Ireland, which is where she lives. Um, And she came to me at the back end of last year. Again, this shows the touch points, just like the the journey that Vicky took. Um, After having spoken to me for about a year on Instagram, there or thereabouts, about a year. And she said, Chris, I really need your help. Cool. We hopped on a call. I was like, a story brand expert is asking me for help. Anyway, we started working together. I charge a lot more to work one-on-one um, because, and I've only got a couple of slots that I ever fill because I prefer the, the group and the connection there. So we started working together. She made 38 grand in the whole of 2022. In 2023, since she worked with me, she's got a team of four consistent inbound leads, a group program as well as her one-to-one offering, and she's sitting just under 200K in, well, that was in that was in October, so a few weeks ago when I last, last checked. 38 grand to 200 grand in 75% of the time. Wow. And that's, that's she didn't need permission. She just needed guidance and yeah. accountability. I think, yeah. and direction. Massive change. Absolute yeah. massive change. Just spoke to her the other day. I said, I need to speak to you about something. And she said, is it is it if I'm going to sign up with you again in January? Because the answer is yes. I was like, oh, good. Um, <laughs> but it was about something else. It was about speaking at one of our events. So, again, just seeing the difference this makes to people. Yeah. I've had people on, on calls like, I can just tell that they need it, but they're scared. Yeah. They need they need to do it. And I was the same. I paid someone four grand. Um, I was very scared to do it. Palms were sweating. Like, 
I did it though and it changed my life. Not because that was a great service that they offered, but just because I took that step. I saw yeah. that something was possible and I went from worrying about whether I could afford Calendly for £10 a month to just investing <laughs> 15 grand with someone to join the mastermind a couple of months ago. So th- the whole shift is massive. The way I am about myself, the way I talk to other people, everything, just like Vicky, completely changed. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've sat on calls with someone. I've, I've been that sure I can help this person. And obviously with their blessing, I've taken a large chunk of money out of their bank account that could potentially make or break them. Hmm. And I have to be certain that they're going to put the work in and that I can help. But I believe in what we do so much that if I get into one of those situations and I don't push that person, I'm doing them a massive disservice. I feel like it's my duty to take money off that person to allow them to unlock the gates from a selfish and a non-selfish point of view. I remember hanging on on a call when a, a guy said, I need to do this. I'm not sure about the affordability. I need to speak to my wife. And I said, cool, go and speak to her. <laughs> and he did. And this is where the, this is where the telemarketing probably came into, <laughs> into, into handiness. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But he he did go and speak to his wife. I waited five minutes. He came back and said, "Let's do it." He was making seven hundred, uh, no, nine hundred and fifty pounds a month. In his second month, he made seven and a half grand. He did a testimonial interview with me, and I pretty much cried. Hmm. So that's where, I was, and he's like, "I got, I was scared of sales calls. Now I jump on them." Yeah, like. I, I had no idea this was possible. It's you know it's changed my life kind of thing. And I've had multiple. You can go to my LinkedIn page and check out my featured section. Like you'll scroll until your thumbs are sore. <laughs> there are there are that many financial and mindset results that come out of the work we do. It is it's crazy, and it because it's all it all starts up here. We talk about the financial to draw people in, of course, but they leave. Yeah, with money and a new mindset, and hopefully yeah. they don't leave, but some of them yeah. do. Well, thank you for sharing those because it's it is good to hear how people are you know attack this attack you know this this issue that everyone's got. You're running a business, you need leads, you need sales. You know, some people you know are full up and they don't want to work hugely, and some people are starting off and everyone's different parts of their journey. But it, ultimately, it's about getting the moving parts right and what's right for you and your business. And, um, you know, there's, that's the key message out of I, I getting out of this is, you know, yes, have an ecosystem and draw people to you and, um, you know, through your content and, um, and of course, keep them within your orbit is the key thing and keep building trust, keep delivering value, uh, let them build, you know, affinity with your brand and then, and then, you know, don't be afraid to ask for the sale and what does that look like and have calls to action. So plenty of stuff uh, that we unpacked. Uh, Chris, mate, uh, I've really enjoyed the chat. Um, where's the best place for people to uh, look you up? Obviously on LinkedIn, but there's probably a, mil- a million uh, people with the name Chris James. <laughs> yes, there is. So you can go to chris-james.co, which is my website. Do not judge me on that. A new one is coming. Um, it's all right. It's all right. It's not that bad. Um, you can get me on Instagram at salesguychris. Don't judge the name. A new one's coming. Or if you use the uh, the LinkedIn URL, is just slash Chris James online, and that is what I will be called on every other social platform when I get my act together. But I'm too busy refining our product and managing and pouring energy into the amazing team that we've got. Awesome. Thank you very much. I urge people to connect with you or follow you on LinkedIn. Trevor, thank you so much, man. I really enjoyed it. I could carry on talking for hours, as you probably gather. So I will let you go to bed and I can start my day. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this episode of Reputation Revolution, the personal brand monetization show. Today's digital first world is ever-changing, but one thing remains constant. Reputation equals revenue, and opportunities are everywhere. To learn more, subscribe to our newsletter today at reputationrevolution.co.